Hi, my name is Terry Brown. I'm a mechanical engineer and lecturer at university, and I'm just going to go through this textbook example of a winch system. But before I do that, I want to uh, just go back and have a look at some pictures of some real winches just to help you to understand how we might apply um, our analysis of this simplified system to uh, a real life uh, winch. So have a look at some images here. So in this case I've got a couple of examples of winches that have been used on boat trailers. So in our problem up here we're told we've got a winch and we've got a rope that wraps around a drum. So in this case in our picture the drum is hidden behind this ratchet. So if you look down at our picture here uh, we can see here's our ratchet system and this strap is equivalent to the rope over here on our simplified system and on our winch here the load of the boat being pulled up the trailer is in our simplified system we've just got this sandbag here to indicate that we've got a load on this winch okay over here similar sort of thing in this case we've got a cable coming onto the drum that's hidden in behind uh, this ratchet the other thing that's mentioned in the problem is the pawl, which is this link here. So what that does is allows this to rotate around clockwise, but the, to stop the load from just un unwinding and falling back down again. So in the case of the, the boat here, to stop the boat from go going back down the trailer, back into the water, um, it will have a little pawl or link, something like this, that engages with the teeth of the ratchet to stop it from rotating backwards. So if we go to the next slide, we've got a bit of a picture to show you that. So here's um, an example. This particular winch uses a geared system, so we don't have to put as much force uh, onto the, the, the lever here uh, as we would otherwise without this geared system. And you can see this little lever or link in here that will engage into this um, geared system here. And you can see that uh, larger here, there's the little pawl or link that engages with the teeth. So that's what we're showing here in this simplified drawing here that's part of the problem that we're analysing. And as you do any problem, you should look carefully through the information that's given. So first of all, we've got information about the drum radius, that's 100 millimetres, so that's shown down here. We've also got the, uh, we're told that it's uh, pin connected at the centre, um, where we've also got uh, information about the ratchet gear, has a mean radius of 150 millimetres. The pawl that I talked about in looking at the real uh, winches on the boat trailers, so important information here that we're told that we can assume that that pawl or link AB acts as a two force member. So this thing here, when we're doing our analysis, we can make use of the assumption that that will be a two force member. So that, as I said, uh, prevents the drum from rotating backwards. And we're told that our load down here in this case is 2000 newtons and we're asked to determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction force at the pin C. So we want to know what the forces are here. Okay so let's draw on our um, load on the diagram and start by writing out uh, what it is that we need to determine in this problem. So as we uh, identified here we're looking for the reaction forces at C. Okay, so now we're ready to start considering our solution and, and we're assuming that the pole is locked in place and that the system is in equilibrium. So we can then go and use our equations of equilibrium. So uh, write down that we're also going to make use of the fact that the Paul AB is a two-force member. 
and our next step then will be to draw a free body diagram. So we need to work out what we're going to draw the free body diagram of. And in this case, because we're wanting to know the reaction forces at C here, at the um, pin for the drum, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the drum and ratchet. Then the next step, once we've drawn our free body diagram, is to apply the equations of equilibrium. So we'll write out those equations of equilibrium. So we have some of the forces in the x direction equal zero to the right positive, some of the forces in the vertical direction equal zero upwards being positive, and some of the moments equal zero anti-clockwise being positive. Okay, so let's go and draw our free body diagram of the drum and ratchet. And our free body diagram can just start off as a large circle to represent the ratchet and then inside the ratchet we have uh, another circle for the drum that the rope will be attaching to and I've shown that as dotted because that's hidden behind the ratchet and I've also indicated the coordinate system x horizontal and y vertical. So now that we've drawn the body we can start adding in our loads so the load that we have in this case is the 2000 Newton force acting downwards onto the drum. And we can also add in some dimensions there. So just note that it's located 100 millimeters from the center C. So the next thing that we'll consider is the pawl that we've, um, we're going to consider as a two force member. So because it's a two-force member, we know that the force at A and the force at um, the end here at the hinge, the force at those two points will be equal and opposite and collinear because that's a two-force member in equilibrium. So given these dimensions here, we can work out the angle at which that force is going to act and we can draw that in on our diagram. Okay, so we have our force FAB. So if we indicate the angle of that force there as theta AB, then we can also indicate there the location of that force that's at the outer diameter or the outer radius of the ratchet of 150 millimeters, and we can put in our reaction forces at the center pin C. So we will have uh, a force component in the X direction and also a force component in the Y direction. So we'll call that RCX and RCY. Okay, so now if we uh, work out the angle in here, so we go back up to our information that we've got up here. We've got, if we look at this little triangle, we've got an opposite side and an adjacent side, so we can use theta AB is equal to the inverse tan of the opposite, which is 50 mil, over the adjacent side, which is 75, and we can do the maths to work out our angle in here will be 33.69 degrees. Right, now that we have our free body diagram, we can go ahead and start to use that to write our equations of equilibrium. So I'm just going to start on a new page, just copied my free body diagram across and we can usually start by looking at uh, using the moment equation and then we have to think about whereabouts we're going to take moments about. So we could take moments about point C here or about point A or in fact anywhere we like but usually there'll be one or two or three maybe points that are most convenient so in this case, if we take moments about point C, these two forces are going to pass through point C, so they'll have a zero moment effect, and we'll just be left with the force AB as our only unknown. So let's do that. Uh, so some of the moments about point C, anti-clockwise as positive, all equal to zero. And we can start by writing out the components. So we have minus FAB 
cos 33.69 so looking at this force here we're going to have a horizontal component and that will be FAB cos 33.69 and it will tend to cause this ratchet to rotate clockwise which is in the negative direction according to our chosen sign convention so that's why it's negative. Okay, so its perpendicular distance is 150 as we've shown here. And then next we have the force of our load, so 2000 newtons times its perpendicular distance, which will be 100. So it's just the radius here. And it will tend to rotate the ratchet anti-clockwise, which according to our convention is positive. And of course that's all equal to zero. So we have one equation, one unknown, which is our force FAB in the pool over here. So do the sums and we can easily calculate the force equal to 1,602.5 newtons. Next we can start to use our force equations of equilibrium. So we'll start with some of the forces in the horizontal direction equal zero, noting that to the right is positive. So we can start writing in our forces. So we'll have again the horizontal component of the force AB. So FAB cos of angle theta AB. And that's in the positive direction. And we also have the reaction component at C, RCX, going in the negative direction. They're the only two horizontal forces. So that's all equal to zero. And once again, we have only one, uh, one unknown, which is our unknown reaction component, RCX. So do the maths and solve for your unknown force. And that will be 1,333.3 newtons. Okay, so next we'll do some of the forces in the vertical direction equals zero. And... Looking at each of our forces, we have RCY and we have the vertical component of our force AB up here. So that will be this opposite side of this triangle. So FAB sine 33.69 and we also have, of course, our weight of our load here, 2000 newtons. And that's all equal to zero. So again, because we've already found FAB, we can find RCY straight away just by doing some maths, simple maths. So rearrange your equation and solve for RCY, which will be equal to 2,888.9 newtons. Okay, so all we need to do now is to write our final answers at the end. And in doing that, we, of course, round up our answers to three significant figures. So the force in the Paul AB was 1.60 kilonewtons. The X component of the force at the pin C was 1.33 kilonewtons. And the vertical component of the force at C is 2.89 kilonewtons. And, of course, as always, you should go back and check your calculations, check your free body diagrams. So one thing that you could do to uh, check your calculations here and make sure you haven't made any maths errors is to start by taking moments about point A and of course you'll still only have one unknown in the equation because RCY here, its line of action passes through point A so you'll be able to find RCX straight away by using moments about point A because this one also passes through point A, so it will have a zero moment effect. So the only moments you'll have will be the moment effect of the 200, or sorry, the 2000 Newton force, and the moment effect of RCX. Okay, so I hope that was interesting and helpful, and I'll catch you next time in the next example problem.